Hey everybody, okay, I know there's a sound in the background and that's my air conditioner. I live in Florida and it's summer and it's hot. I will re-record the audio if it's bad, okay? Promise. Okay, anyway, t this month is Pride Month and I wanted to do a couple of videos. Originally, I was gonna do four. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do that now, but I'm at least going to do two and I'm gonna film them on the same day. So I'm out in my Pride gear because I'm here. I'm queer, never fear. <laughs> anyway, um, today we're going to talk about a historical figure that, a historical queer figure in history, and her name is Tora Jean Katoon. I apologize if I am mispronouncing um, this name. I am not Mongolian, and she is, she is Mongolian. Okay, so during this time, men were frequently absent to wage wars against people, other people. Um, so women began to wield a lot more influence with some notable women assuming control as rulers. One such woman was Tora Jean Katoon. During this time, um, Katoon was a title meaning queen or empress. I'm sure now it's just a surname, but back in the day, yeah. Um, so she was married to a chief of the Merkhead. I googled it and it was a little, I was a bit confused about what the Merkhead were probably pronouncing that incorrectly um, but she was married to the chief of one of them and this group um, waged war against the Mongols um, so like the main empire I guess and um, she was later forced to marry one of Genghis Khan's sons she married Genghis Khan's third son, Ogade, and served as regent after her husband's death from 1241 until 1246, ruling over the largest empires in the world at that time. She gave birth to Ogade's oldest son and thus acquired a higher status um, than his first wife because she gave birth to his first son. Ogede was known to be a drunk, and it is believed that she began to exercise her influence in his absence because he was too busy getting drunk. Um, he was eventually made great Khan, so like, I think like a president maybe, or like a, he's a dictator, I guess. I don't know. Big dog in the government. Um, he wasn't exactly a good leader though. He squandered the empire's wealth and overextended the military and basically trampled over all of his father's moral codes. He committed some like truly horrific war crimes is what I'm saying. He's a bad dude. Um, Tori Jean revamped tax collection and began education and construction pro projects. By custom, after the Khan's death, it was up to the, to the Katoon to summon the Mongolian nobility to, a, to an assembly to appoint the next ruler. Torajin purposely postponed calling the appointment to the next ruler um, and handing over command to like an excess, uh, successor. She didn't want that. She wanted to rule. One woman to rule them all. Anyway, um, Instead, she dismissed Ogade's ministers and appointed her own, and the most powerful role in court was given to another woman named Fatima, who became her chief advisor. Like Torjean, Fatima had been brought in as a captive, but worked her way up. Before becoming a servant, she had run the local brothels. It's pretty telling, though, that Torjean had five sons and didn't install them in any important positions. While Fatima was elevated, um, many called her Katoon, or Queen. One chronicler 
described how she had constant access to Tora Jean's tent. Ooh. And how she became the sharer of in intimate confidences and depository of hidden secrets. But real talk, there's little info on these two and most of it comes from really biased so sources. One can't conclusively state that they were a couple, however, if you look at the available ev evidence, you can see how some people land on, you know, they're a couple. Anyway, throughout this, Tori Jean had been backing her son, Giyuk. Giyuk. I mean, it's spelled that way. To succeed her. She outmaneuvered the Ryle claimants by brutally reorganizing the empire, executing political opponents, and installing supporters. She employed hellish tactics, but they worked. Gaiak took power and she and Fatima retired. The two spent most of their lives at the beck and call of Mongol men, foreigners in a conqueror's court, so together they beat the odds. They can enjoy their little quiet slice of heaven together, but unfortunately it was not made to last. Yeah. Gayuk quickly turned on his mother. He executed her officials, undid her fairly unpopular laws, and accused Fatima of witchcraft. He demanded she be surrendered, and Torjean replied that she'd rather kill herself. Time and time again, Gayuk sent messengers to retrieve Fatima, and Torjean made excuses each time. She refused to hand over her to him. In the end, Guy took Fatima by force and executed her in an utterly inhumane fashion. Torjean died as well around this time, though it is unclear whether it was before or after um, Fatima's demise. It's also unknown how exactly she died. So, for sure we can't say that they're queer, but but it is suggested so she's on this list okay she's on this queer historical figures list okay um so anyway that is the semi-queer story of tori jean katoon and her female companion fatima fatima so um like comment subscribe um let me know what other historical figures um, you want me to do a video on it doesn't they don't have to be queer necessarily they don't necessarily need to be women just let me know what you what guys want to see anyway bye